G'day guys, looks like we managed to make it to Christmas in 2020, a few more days and we will reach the new year. So I decided to wrap up the year by talking about one Christmas movie that I have a certain fondness for. I would not rank it as highly as Die Hard or Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, but it's definitely one I appreciate. Ho 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 ho, delightfully devilish Seymour. <laughs> Yes, everybody, welcome back to Delightfully Devilish, the show where we discuss films that all at once meet the criteria of being the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm your host, Jukebox Harry, and today we're going to be looking at one of the most controversial films of the 1980s. Silent Night, Deadly Night is a 1984 slasher film starring nobody that you've probably ever heard of. It was protested by film critics and picketed by angry parents who did not like the idea of Santa Claus appearing as a killer. It was quickly pulled from theaters, but not before it was able to gross a total of $2.5 million on a small budget of $750,000 before smashing success on home media. Oddly enough, this film came out after the movie Christmas Evil, which also depicted Santa Claus as a serial killer. Nobody really went up in arms about that one, but this one they did. I don't know. But I remember I was very interested in this movie as a kid, but I was too frightened about watching any horror film as a whole, so I watched it in segments, and eventually watched enough of the segments to have seen literally the entire movie. When it comes to slasher films, there are actually very few that I'm fond of. I do enjoy Scream, Halloween, Halloween 2018, the remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night, and I do have a certain appreciation for the first Nightmare on Elm Street, yet Silent Night, Deadly Night was one that always stood out in my memory because in certain ways it was able to rise above standards of the genre, if not entirely. So let's have a look at this Christmas cult classic. Can you hear him in the night? Close the door, turn out the light. Silent Night, Deadly Night begins with a young boy named Billy and his family on Christmas Eve. They drive to visit his grandfather at a mental institution in Utah. I'm from Utah. Oh, I'm sorry. Grandpa appears completely incontinent around the adults, but for some inexplicable reason when they go away, suddenly he starts talking. Grandpa? You know all about Santa Claus. He brings presents to all good boys and girls. Santa Claus only brings presents to them that's been good all year. All the naughty ones, he punishes you. See Santa Claus tonight, you better run for your life. Nothing about this scene is ever given any explanation whatsoever. Why he's obsessed with Santa Claus, why he pretends to be incontinent around the adults but then talks directly to the kid. The guy's obviously some kind of insane, but we don't know what. It all just comes into the film out of the blue for the sake of disturbing a child. I'm scared! Of who, honey? Santa Claus! Meanwhile, at a local gas station... I'm holding you up, asshole! The rubber takes all the money and finishes the clerk off before driving off, but unfortunately his car breaks down on the side of the road. When Billy's parents stop and try to help them, he shoots the father before attempting to sexually assault mum. When she resists, he slits her throat as Billy watches. And when the rubber is finished, Billy has disappeared with his baby brother. Then we cut forward to an orphanage in 1974 where Billy is staying. He gets in trouble for doing an obscene Christmas themed drawing, but Mother Superior, played by Lillian Chauvin from Universal Soldier, could not have any care for his mental state at all. The more sympathetic Sister Margaret expresses concern for Billy's well-being, but Mother Superior remains adamant. Simply because something unfortunate happened to his parents, which he knows nothing about, is no reason to allow him to run wild. Well, if you were a man, I would punch you. I'd punch you right in the mouth. Mother Superior only wants what's best for you. I don't believe that. Later, Billy wanders through the orphanage and finds two people having sex. It's never explained who these two people are, but this film seems pretty content to have random characters thrown in there for no explicable reason whatsoever. Seeing them engaged in sexual activity gives Billy frightening flashbacks to his mother's sexual assault, and Mother Superior comes in to whip them with a belt. Although for all we know they could be into this, they do seem like a kinky pair. What they were doing was something very, very naughty. The word naughty gets thrown around an insane amount in this film. You can make a game of drinking every time they say it. For the sin of seeing two people have sex, Mother Superior repeatedly whips Billy. Although since she was watching it too, she's just as guilty. This is just another example of the Catholic Church abusing children, but we know that's exactly what they're all about. She also ties him to the bed when he has nightmares. You're a fucking cunt. Christmas time comes to the orphanage and Mother Superior attempts to force Billy to sit on Santa Claus's lap. You will learn gratitude. <laughs> Say thank you to Santa Claus. Catholics forcing children to sit on the laps of older men without their consent. Yeah, this movie captures the church perfectly. No! <laughs> it occurs to me, this movie might be the Christmas movie for the people who hate Christmas, and that moment right there perfectly symbolizes it. It's kind of like how Deadpool is the superhero movie for people who don't like superhero movies. Billy runs to his room and waits in fear as Mother Superior comes for him. William Busted! <laughs> Then we cut forward again to 1984, where Billy has turned 18. He starts Monday morning. 
Billy gets a job helping out at a toy store and the film turns into a very 80s style montage of Billy experiencing the normality of working life and developing a crush on his co-worker. But when Christmas time rolls around, he begins to act differently. Just what the fuck you think you're doing now? All of a sudden you got this fucking attitude problem. You really want to say that and then drop the F-bomb? There's a bit of inconsistency there. Merry Christmas! <laughs> you don't look so good. Oh really? What gave it away? Was it the fact that he fell into all those balls? Are you sure you're alright, Billy? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Nick Manette. Billy, are you sure you're alright? Why are we getting echoed flashbacks to something we literally just heard a few seconds ago? Billy continues to have traumatizing nightmares about Santa Claus and it isn't helped when the toy store Santa Claus finds himself injured and unable to work resulting in Billy being pushed into playing Santa Claus. Bad idea. He's definitely fat and jolly. Is he though? He spends the day traumatizing the children. I don't bring toys to naughty children. I punish them. Severely. He sure knows how to handle kids. He's great, isn't he? Child abuse is just such a normal thing in the universe of this film. Everyone is so terrible, so it's probably good they're all going to get murdered. Seven o'clock. It's over! Time to get shit-faced! Good plan. Despite being three years under the legal drinking age, Billy's co-workers get him drunk. By the time this party is over, you'll think you are Santa Claus. Classic tea-up. You remember what Santa Claus does on Christmas Eve, don't you? Suddenly the visual quality turns a bit rough and I'm not sure what happened here, if they changed the camera or if it was an issue with the transfer, but either way it's notable and a bit jarring. Billy wanders to the back room where his dickhead co-worker Andy begins to sexually assault Pamela and the sights immediately begin to give Billy traumatizing flashbacks all over again. All the flashbacks in this movie are exhausting. That being said, they are nowhere near as bad as the amount of flashbacks used in Silent Night Deadly Night Part 2. Completely consumed by his own trauma, Billy has a psychotic meltdown and begins to believe that he has become Santa Claus. In the spirit of Christmas, he chokes Andy to death with Christmas lights. It begins! And he doesn't let Pamela off either. Punishment is necessary, Pamela. It is good. We're a bit past the halfway mark and now Billy becomes the killer. Even though Silent Night Deadly Night does try to have more on its mind than a standard slasher film, the slow pace definitely doesn't do it many favours. Billy's hammered boss comes in searching and gets hammered, except literally this time. And then Billy finishes the job by killing his final co-worker with a bow and arrow. And meanwhile in another house, more random people are getting it on. I will say, for a movie that tries to divert a lot of conventions of the slasher movie genre, Silent Night Deadly Night does still have a lot of violence and sex, whether it's consensual or not. Billy comes to the house and breaks in, determined to punish these randos for their sexual autonomy. This leads to a Texas Chainsaw Massacre inspired death where Billy impales the girl on deer antlers. Punish! 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 I gotta admit, despite that being physically impossible, that is definitely an original death. Her boyfriend goes searching. This is some kind of joke, I'm gonna kill her. I get it! Her boyfriend encounters Billy, and after a brief scuffle with a fire poker, Billy tears his shirt off. Punish! Punish or punishment is another word that you want to drink every time it gets uttered in this movie. It will help make the experience a bit better. He throws the boy out the window, glassing him to death, but before leaving the house he encounters the little girl. Have you been good? Or have you been naughty? You haven't done anything naughty. No, Santa Claus. Are you sure? I know I've said before that I like to see kids getting killed in movies, but I will say this moment does play with my expectations and goes to show that the character does still have some humanity. And the police have been sent out to find a killer Santa Claus and they come to a house where they find a father pretending to be Santa Claus for his daughter. Hold it! Stop right there! Daddy! Interestingly enough, that Santa Claus is actually Donald L. Shanks, the actor and stuntman who played the titular Michael Myers in Halloween 5 The Revenge of Michael Myers, as well as the fisherman killer in I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer. Those are terrible movies, but that's still a nice little factoid. Elsewhere in the neighborhood, a couple of kids who are off sledding get beaten up by local bullies who steal the sleds for themselves, but while one of them gets away scot-free, the other one isn't so lucky. <laughs> Sister Margaret predicts that Billy will return to the orphanage, so the police are sent after him. Bombing officers are ordered to shoot to kill if necessary. When Santa starts approaching the orphanage, the police pull a gun on him, but when he fails to respond... I started blasting. Bang! 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 Try to shoot him in the back. Unfortunately, they killed the wrong Santa. It's Father O'Brien. He was our Santa this year. 
kid we're looking for is 18. Barnes wanted the guy to stop, Captain. He didn't respond. Of course not. He's deaf. He couldn't hear it. The police shot and killed an innocent, unarmed white man. That's, that's almost unheard of. I don't understand how you could have mistaken Father O'Brien for the murder in the first place. I don't understand how abusing and molesting children is so inherent to Catholicism, so we're both confused here, Mother Superior. I am Mother Superior, and so far all you have done is harm. You of all people really don't have any right to be saying that. The trauma you've inflicted on Billy is largely why he's killing people in the first place. Don't let anybody come in unless you know exactly who it is. No one is going to get in that doesn't belong here. Now let's remember that. Officer Kevin Bacon shows up to search for Billy and goes for a wander in a storage shelter. And after a very drawn out meander through the grounds, he finds nothing and returns to the surface. Punish! Oh, I did not see that coming! That shot was so unnecessary, but so wonderful. More than anything, it reminds me of a similar scene from Cannibal the Musical. Because he's dressed as Santa Claus, one of the children lets Billy into the orphanage. So... No one is going to get in that doesn't belong here. So that was a fucking lie. As Billy begins to approach Mother Superior, he is finally gunned down. Anyway, you guys all think I'm a hero, and I'll accept that responsibility. The film turns very tragic as he dies. You're safe now. Santa Claus is God. And the camera pans up on a child who the film has less than explicitly made clear as Billy's younger brother, Ricky. Naughty. Oh shit, buddy. And that's where the film ends. So, is Silent Night, Deadly Night a good film? Sort of. Silent Night, Deadly Night is an enjoyable horror film, but it doesn't exactly make it a good film. There are a lot of moments I left out of my review of Silent Night, Deadly Night, but none of them are completely essential to the plot. I always make sure to cover the important stuff. Everything that I've left out of the film are just slow and drawn out conversations, which cover subjects that I can easily summarize in a matter of words. And that is the major problem with Silent Night, Deadly Night. It really stretches a thin plot to feature length with a lot of unnecessary conversations and a very slow pace. And very few moments in the film are campy in a way that makes it enjoyable. Silent Night, Deadly Night has a lot of ambition, which I respect. Rather than relying on a group of generic characters who are picked off one by one by an un scene killer, the film actually focuses on the killer himself, who is always going to be the most interesting character in a slasher film. It serves as a character study which shows him as an innocent child as he is steadily turned more unhinged by the world around him. I always like the film for taking that approach to the character, trying to make us understand and sympathise with the protagonist while also being scared of him as the antagonist at the same time. Rob Zombie tried to do the same thing when he remade Halloween, except that he picked the wrong character to do so. I do think that film was okay in parts, but I think Silent Night Deadly Night had a better character to do that with. Despite Emmy to be more than a generic slasher film, the movie's ambitions exceed its grasp. Silent Night Deadly Night is too heavily rooted in the one-dimensional limitations of the slasher genre to have any major character development or groundbreaking themes to rise above its shortcomings. Director Charles E. Sellier Jr. tries to deal with themes such as childhood trauma, bullying, police brutality, and the institutional abuse of the Catholic Church, but with his workmanlike direction, there is never really any substance to all this. It just gets used for the sake of gimmicks. He's competent at framing everything, the film is really well shot, and the death scenes are done pretty well, but there is never really any dimension added to the film. There's constantly a feeling that Silent Night, Deadly Night keeps falling flat. The performances are all pretty one note, the pace is glacial, there are few surprises and there is almost never even a sense of humour about things. The film takes itself so seriously with its ambitions as a tragedy even though it doesn't have enough genuine substance to elevate itself up to its goals. And you'll find yourself waiting around a lot, waiting till we're past halfway through the film before the killer emerges and then waiting through a lot of meaningless conversations until things actually happen. The victims are as meaningless as in any other slasher film and since we're spending all our time with a villain instead we have even less emotional attachment to them. And Silent Night Deadly Night can't exactly decide whether it wants us to sympathise with Billy or fear him. And since none of this ever really adds up to anything, the resulting film fails to live up to its potential. And it's all too often a slow and unsurprising experience, which often feels desperate in its attempts to get to feature length. I've mentioned before that I'm very rarely fond of slasher films, and this is one that always stood out for me because of the fact that it did try to be something more. I will say, even though Silent Night Deadly Night didn't exactly succeed at that, it gave it its best shot, and I definitely have to give props to the director for that. Even though it feels dull and mechanical a lot of the time, it did try to be something different. It didn't just want to throw a bunch of meaningless characters on the screen, have them get picked off one by one while we wondered who the killer was. No, it tried to make us understand what motivations this killer had and what shaped him to be a killer. The drama is never as deep as it wants to be, the dialogue is very repetitive, and like I said, the performances don't have too much conviction. But I'll never discredit the fact that Silent Night, Deadly Night has more on its mind and far more ambition than most slasher films. So it's definitely one of the better examples of the genre in my opinion. The controversial response to this movie was so brutal when it first came out 
that Charles E. Sellier Jr. actually had to stop directing films and change his career to becoming strictly a producer. He himself has always said that he was surprised people didn't take more offense to the way the film depicted the Catholic Church. Although I think in retrospect, that's probably because kids should be scared of the Catholic Church and probably shouldn't be scared of Santa Claus. And everyone saying they did not want to see Santa Claus as a serial killer, well, in 2008, that is exactly what happened when a man by the name of Bruce Jeffrey Pardo entered the house of former in-laws and committed an act known as the Covina Massacre. Nine people were killed with a mix of gunshots and a homemade flamethrower. And that incident inspired the remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night, which has been titled Silent Night. Like I said, that is actually a pretty solid slasher film, and I'll hopefully get to talk about it one day. Silent Night, Deadly Night gets four decapitated snowmen out of ten. Although it does have more on its mind and more character than most slasher films, it unfortunately falls victim to too many conventions of the genre, becoming repetitive, slow, bereft of any kind of great dialogue or performances, and having a big absence of campy thrills that often make the genre more fun. And that does it for today's episode of Diefully Devilish, you guys. If there are any movies you want to see me discuss on this show, please leave them in the comment section below. If you want to see more episodes of this show, please hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, until next time, I have been your host, Jukebox Harry. Peace.